Hello people, welcome back to Dutch Modeling. We have another inbox review for today. And this time we're gonna do another Gecko Models Cruiser Tank, the A10 Mark 1A, 135th scale. Kit number is 35 GM and 0002. Which implies to me it's their second kit they made. Uh, you go where you get, what you see, the tank, we have a figure, you'll see it in a second. So, box art, nice, done, rendered, cartoonish box art, I like it. A little bit of an action going on in the background, so. And the Union Jack around here. Then on one of the sides, you got the photo exploits, overview of the deco sheet, a figure, a track jack, or holder, or whatever you want to, and wire, and cable. Here you got more of the information. The color callouts, a couple of them. And again, more of the same. So, open the box. And we got nothing. Open the second box. And we got stuff. We got a pretty thick instruction man manual. A postery kind of thing, and I like these. Uh, a whole lot of spruce. And a setup like this. I told you by the first Gecko models, really does remind me of a certain other brand. But I don't really care about that as long as they're good. So let's take it all out. Yes. Quite a few sprues in here. Mostly in receivable bags, and here's the sheet with all the extras. So, this on the side. Now let's, no, you've seen the poster, so put that together. Right? Let's start with the booklet. Ah, before I really start, ah, I need this. Side. So the instructions. It's a little write-up. Chinese, Japanese, Korean. I guess I don't know. English, Deutsch, and that's it. So it's about uh, how Vickers made the tank. Sprue overview, sprue map. Basically the uh, render of it. So they are all lettered and numbered. Lettered above as well. See the differences. Get A1, A, E, A, and get E, B. It's also in the corners. So. And then you got electrical wire, a cord, figures, what they call a plaster, we call it decals, and PE sheet. You got a multiple little hole, so just the bottom, sides, front, and rear. You can see, put these together. And the interior colors are called out by name, not by company number or whatever you like. Yeah. Uh, XF15 or AK27 or no, it's just silver. I really do like that. Semi gloss, black. Leather black, so you can choose for your own which paint you want to use. These uh, parts of the steering for the driver seats being built up here. The seats and the bow gunner next to each other set up. Here they warn you where not to cut, so you don't cut them too short because. Uh, some of the pins you cut off are being used as uh, guide horn, guide pins. So you know you can place them correctly. Uh, Ammo rack. See, copper, gold leaf. Side armor. Uh, this is all interior stuff which is going to build up here. Firewall. 
placed, the upper glaciers is being placed, uh, the firewalls are being put in between the driver's compartment here, the fighting compartment there and the engine compartment, which I don't believe there is an engine in this one. The bogies, and I got a warning here, movable suspension system, be careful not to put too much glue, otherwise it won't be movable anymore of course. Bogus being built up completely here. Step more here. Sprocket wheels being placed. Bogus being placed. The idler holder being placed. And more rear armors here. Sprocket wheels and everything on the other side. So it's basically a copy. Light. Here's the how the tracks are being assembled on the jig. So there's one, two, three parts to each track link. So that's a lot. And I don't know if they are supposed to be workable or not. Yeah, no glue, so they will be workable tracks. I wonder how that will end up being in the end. To be honest. Uh, idlers being pulled up here, placed there, as you can see. And they advise an earth or a rust tone for the tracks. And each side has 74 pieces. This is always the bow machine gun. And the viewport for the gunner and the driver. We built up here. There's a hatch, open or close position, whatever you want. Third ring, side armors and front armor and everything here. The uh, hatches for the driver and bow machine gunner, engine deck. These are going to be the air intake for the sides, or the cooling pins, whatever you call them. The exhaust system with the exhaust shroud, which is PE. Cover. Then here. Hatches, open or close position, whatever you want. Sides, just build them up, and you're going from there into the turret. Vision fuel ports and everything going wheel up, electric engine for turning the turret ring. And this is for the desert version only. So make sure you will not know what version you're gonna build. These are extra fuel things. And uh, this is assembly for the standard version. It's a uh, toolbox and everything. Yeah. You can see here all some small stuff. Toolbox is being built up. The right fender is being built up, everything on there. Left fender is being built up, everything on there. Fuel tank assembly. That's gonna be a that's not gonna be fun. Uh, how camera picks it? I'm gonna close it. I don't know how good the camera picks up the gold for the yellow for the photo edge. That's gonna be no fun. Well, that's how they want it. And then a few things goes in the side. This is the assembly for the desert version. Right fender, left fender. So there's a little bit of a difference, as you can see, between the two. Make sure you know which one you want to go for. These are optionals. This is the standard version. This is the desert version. And now you might ask why did they turn this around? Here you can see the extra fuel can holders being added, which isn't on that one. And by the looks of it, you're gonna need to place two photo edge parts in the desert version. You do not place it in our standard version. So. Back to the turret, <laughs> the bridge, the gun, with all its components, the mantlet, gun, shield, gun itself, and everything here, radio being placed, the third roof, 
being prepared for. Charge of the turret being placed, the roof is going on, hatch is going on, and they also open or close position, whatever you want. Spare tires going on for desert only, desert version only with the ropes. See there, you tie it on, that simple. And then the, well, it's basically done. Get some tools, turret goes in. Finish. You got the standard version or the desert version. A couple of differences. Spare fuel tank in the front. Don't have this. The wheels doesn't have it. And the rack on the back it doesn't have that one. And the scoops here in the front doesn't have that one. So the most complete version will be the desert version. And here are the options. Get the Royal Tank Regiment, first armored division in the UK, 1940. The Beef Squadron 3rd Royal Tank Division, 2nd Armament Division, Greece, 1941. Then you got the C Squadron 3rd Royal Tank Division, 2nd Armament Division, Greece, 1941. And the HQ 2nd Royal Tank Regiment, 1st Armament Division, UK, 1940. And then you got the HQ 2nd Squadron, no, Squadron 2nd Royal Tank Division, 7th Armament Division in Libya, 1941. And you got the figure. And there's a special thanks to Model Center Progress, Robert Robbery, Andrew Gad, and Simon King. So, the instructions. Uh, let's start with the special stuff. So, you got some rope, just simple twine. Electrical wire, which I didn't see them use, but that could be just me. The photo edge, not a lot, there's the middle, but enough for my taste at least. Everybody who knows me by now, I don't really like photo edge. And an extra sheet for the decals, as you can see, and they look nice. So, yeah, put this out of the way, close the back up again, don't want to damage them. Let's see, let's start with the probably most annoying part of the kit, the tracks. This is a not receivable bag. You got two, four, seven sprues, the same. Take one out. Can't hear invested. So you got the cleats, the runners, and the parts that should make it movable. This is all very small, very straight, and I don't really see anything wrong with it. But there's very small holes. There are only two cleanup parts on each side. Uh, it's a minimal of cleanup because they try to attach them on the underside. So it's going to be easier to clean up. Looks good. Let's see some detail there. There it is. And then. Those, and I don't know if I can show you like in this side, but where did they got attached? See how they attach that stuff? Keep clean up to a minimum, so that's a good thing. 
But still, you still got some screws of these, so yeah. I'm gonna test your patience a little bit. Uh, next up, let's take this one. The third ring. One simple screw. Oop, just a third ring in here. Just a little bit of flash, but it's gone again, so it's not that bad. Nicely detailed. In the uh, sprue gates placed in this position that they are very easily to clean. Yeah, this looks good. I don't need the mat for this one. It's almost impossible to use it, so it will look like this. That's basically the third ring. Next up, a resealable bag. And these are as well six of the same. Take out these are the road wheels. So yeah, they will be the same. <sighs> Nicely detailed again. Has a little bit of a seam but it should even be could be that it's even possible and ah yeah they uh this is basically one road wheel on two because this part goes in here which means you don't have the seam to sand off afterwards got two locator pins here and they go in there and this way this one is the s no that's not the same well, that's how it goes at least. So that's nice. You can see the detail on here. And then that one, that small one, that small one goes on top of there. And there's some detail there. Let's turn this around so you can actually clearly see. Those two go in together. Yep, that's a different way of doing it. It uh, takes care of a lot of sanding, that's for sure. These are all different screws. Let's start with this. Uh, I would say ammo, the gun, which is slight molded. Very tiny. Uh, open a bit. You might want to drill it out a little bit further. Yeah, basically gun parts. Fit. Yeah, breech, breech block, slider. Yeah, these are the gun parts. So ammo. Ammo. There. There's the gun. You can see there. Open, it's got a nice slide molded, that's not too bad. And breach gun parts there, everything. So, it's one small one. Then we got the machine gun. Two of the machine guns. Got two machine guns. Ooh, nice. Got two machine guns. And with some little stuff on there. The trigger is pretty. Nicely molded there, as you can see. Turn it around. This is the other side. So. It's that. And here we got the turret front, the matlet. Oh, yeah, still more. The, looks like the stock of the machine gun. And some small stuff. Casking texture on the mantlet. It's nice. I'll show you in a second. There's an overview of the sprue. Let's see if I can get the. 
you do. Take turn the mantlet upside as well. I don't know how the sun, the light catches it, but yeah, there it is. That's nice. I haven't seen that. Back in there. Next up, we got a lot of receivable bags. I like receivable bags. And this looks like to be one, two, three. Yep. Four of the same. Suspension. The, the, the buggies with wheels and everything. So the uh, spring, the coil spring. Very nicely molded. Will be a little bit of a Peter to clean up, but the arms again with the texture and the, the casting texture here. The wheels they go together the same as the single ones. Yeah, it looks good. There's a little bit of sanding work, but that's basically it. And then there's the call spring. You can see. Oh, ah, no, it's moving. Sorry. Nice and. You actually see through it. You can see. The camera picks it up. Yeah, a little bit. It's. Uh, Definitely a fine mold. They're not the easiest. Next up. These are two of the same again. This is pocket, seat, look like arms, swing arms, kinda. Uh, don't know what this is for. Probably parts of the sprocket wheel, but I'm not 100%. Seat part. So, yep. Small parts, lighting there, those arms there. Not definitely sure where they're from. For it's back of the seat, part of the sprocket, another part of the sprocket. I don't know. What, I guess that's part of the sprocket as well, but I'm not sure. And the seating itself. Small parts in the middle. Let's see if there's anything. Oops. And again, a little bit of a tech. Did that cast texture here on this one? I don't know, I think I was too fast. But see there, a little bit of texture. So that's a nice touch. One second. Next up, oh, a lot of small sprues. Come back. These two are the same, and these three are the same, as you can see. So, this looks like extra ammunition with two screws. So, that's it, basically. And these are for the MRX. I can do this in once. It's not a lot to see. See there? Nicely done. Dump it all back. Nothing gets damaged.
And another small part. I'm keeping a large proof for land. Last time this time. I don't know why. Just feel like it. The figure and some clear parts. Well, clear parts are basically lenses and two vision blocks. And that's it. So, being a armor part, it doesn't really matter. The figure. That's not too bad. For a figure that's included. Yeah. Of course, this cleanup, but the fingers are very well defined. The face is very well defined. The details aren't too soft. No, definitely not. You can see. Oh, my camera actually picks it up as being a face, so it's nice. And the fingers, the torso. Bonus figure, always nice. And then up to the big spruce. Lower hole, fuel tanks, turret bar, bottom, turret roof, sides, front, rear, idler, wheels, firewall, and all kinds of armor. Very pronounced molding this. Lots of rivets. Some casting to it as well. Rivets and casting combined with normal plastic. This is really good print. This is some nice some pre-made dents in the fuel tank by the looks of it. I don't know if it's on purpose. Yeah, it looks to be on purpose. That's a cool feature. Did you see that before? I don't know if the camera picks it up though. It's really playing with the light while you can see it. Casting texture here is brilliantly done. Nah, uh, yeah. Basically, no. There's not a lot on the interior, so I'm just going to keep it on the outside. Let's see. And zoom, as you can see there. There's the casting texture. And then there's all these rivets. And then again, goes to all of it. And then if you can see that part, there's again a catching texture on it. And the rivets. Let's see if I can get a close-up of the fuel tanks. Let's see if we can see the basically the imperfection in the plastic. That are, that's pre-dented. There. As you see? Yeah, I can see it so you should be able to see it as well. And then there's all these nice small parts. Is there one thing to check? Nope, that was just my eyes. Nothing wrong with it. And then these parts basically I wanted to you can see there the Casting texture next to the plain plastic, so to speak. That's nicely done as well. Oh well, yeah, this is uh, very nice molding. In, stretch it. Nice redly plastic. Next big one. Tire top surface, almost. Fenders, 
standard and desertized version, sides of the hole, the top of the hole, and then some small stuff again. So, not really something special. Cast texture here and there, it's like on the edges. Don't know if that's a texture that's just dirty. Uh, not really any detailing on the inside again, so just keep it on the outside. Again here. Oh wow! So you got the normal plastic, you got the rivets, you got the texture, and you got a casting number in here as well. That's eye for detail. That's cool. That's definitely cool. I hadn't seen that before. Let's see if I can get it close enough so you can see it. Going up there. There you can see it. Catch it in there. And that's not big. And it's on both sides, so that's brilliantly done. So overview again. Everything. Fenders there. The hole. Upper hole, part, most part of it. The other fender. So one is the desertized version, the other one is the standard version. Yeah, this proves pretty big. So all the small little things that just make it that difference. And that casting number, it's basically underneath the uh, sprocket, so I doubt you will even see it. Well, I'm guessing it's one of those, but I know it's there, things. Let's see, these are the same, and these are all different, so let's do this one first, lighting and something. Yeah, uh, it's for something and I have no clue what it is, could be the searchlight picture, I don't know, but that looks more like a searchlight picture, so. I'm not afraid to tell you when I'm clueless. Uh, hatches for the roof, third roof, commander roof with the, it's detailed on the inside. And the rest is all miscellaneous. This looks like a wood block for the jack with a nice wood grain. With some imperfection in it, unlike, unlike the dragon, which always is perfect. can see there some gouges out there so that's nice and then there's some small stuff oh shit that wasn't supposed to happen sorry it's inside of the edges as well and then some more small stuff here all kinds of very nicely detailed again as you can see there Yep, and then the last sprue already, well already it's taken some time to get here, but it's not, not always a bad thing. The third basket, the wall, firewall, radio, that seems a little bit stressed, yeah this is definitely stressed. That's not how it's supposed to be, but that's how they made it. Okay, that's not good. They mm, this has bent. That's the problem. Yeah, that's yeah. It's a mistake they made. Definitely a mistake they made. I'll show you in a second. But they made this bar here to protect. This in the front because you got the sprue gauge. But what they fail to see once they pack it, and this happens, 
all this gets stress fractures. So this is all stressed out. This plastic is all stressed out. I hope I'm going to be able to clean that up decently because it's yeah. As soon as you got some pressure on here, it will bend that. So that's not a smart move. And to be honest, it's the only not so smart thing I've seen them do in this entire kit. So yeah, tough luck. And for the rest, it looks very nice. <coughs> you can see all the firewalls. All kinds of small stuff. And here's the third basket coming up. Again, with a nice detailing on there. With the wood grain and everything. And some more stuff here. You can see. All kinds of small miscellaneous stuff. And then there is their only see? It's their only mistake they made. Because you can probably see it like this better. Plastic is all white out. And it's all stressed. Because they that. So yeah. All the good decisions they made. That's definitely not one of them. But it'll live. That's not the problem. And that's the last thing. Let's see. It's almost going in the back in the white box. Hello, Tamia. No, it's not a Tamiya. Tamiya modes. This is Gecko Models, and this is an impressive kit. This was my review of the Gecko Models Cruiser Tank A10 Mark 1A on kit number 35 GM0002. Uh, yeah, it's uh, an impressive kit. Oh, I know now where that is for. Thank you, Gecko Models. It's an impressive kit. There's a lot of detail, a lot of fine molding. Crisp molding, it's all in all, uh, for being their second kit, oh, very impressive. Free figure with it is always a good thing. So, uh, except for that one the decision they made to kind of try to protect their small stuff, which horribly, well, horribly, which backfired, which is a shame. Uh, I so far haven't seen a mistake. I don't know how they go together yet because I haven't built one. I will soon, hopefully. And until that time, I hope you enjoyed this review. There will be more. See you next time. Bye bye.